One of the biggest gripes I have with the desktop lasers like the Xtool S1 or P2 isn't their performance, but it's the size of the exhaust system. So when I got these lasers, the number one thing on my to-do list was find a way to mod the exhaust system so I can at least use a four inch inline fan to increase the airflow. Breathing fumes in the entire room smelling like smoke kind of sucks, I'm sure most of us would agree with that. And I think I might have found exactly what I was looking for. What you're looking at here are exhaust adapters made specifically for the S1 and the P2 by a company called Lakeshore 3D. Let's get them installed and try it out. Before we install the adapters, let me show you what I've been doing in the meantime to increase my airflow. I've been taking the stock exhaust hoses from both lasers and just shoving them into the ducting that comes with my inline fan and attempting to clamp it down. It kind of works, but it's a little sloppy, I'd say. Starting with the P2, first we make sure to unplug the laser to stay safe. Next, we unclamp the hose and use one of the small hex keys that comes in your toolkit to remove the four screws. It pops right off and exposes the stock exhaust fan. At this point, we have two options for how to proceed. The P2 adapter actually gives you a choice on whether you want to keep the internal fan in place and just add an inline fan on top or completely remove it and just use your inline fan. This piece here, this is the fan spacer and this will take the place of your fan when you take it out. I'm going to opt to remove the stock fan entirely and use the fan spacer. Keeping the stock fan in place isn't going to add anything to the airflow. In fact, it'll probably act as an obstruction. To remove the fan, we just unclip the wire and pull it out. I'm putting a little piece of electrical tape over top of the plug just to keep it clean from any exhaust debris that might flow around it. We might want to put the stock fan back in the future. Next, we insert the fan spacer followed by the adapter and gently tighten the four screws. Here's a look at the inline fan I'll be using. This is the AC Infinity Cloudline S4. I highly recommend this brand. It works great and it's super quiet. I also have the larger Cloudline S6 for my fiber laser. Before we connect the ducting, look at the size difference between the S4 fan and the stock fan, night and day. Next step, just clamp the hose on the end of the adapter and we make sure the other end is routed outside and we're just about good to go. This last step is going to pertain to the P2 only. Since we removed the internal fan, to avoid any low fan current warnings, we open up Creative Space and go to the machine settings and turn off the exhaust fan option. All of our fan related activities will now be controlled independently by this little controller. Next, let's install the S1 adapter on our S1. This is basically the same process, except the hose is attached to the stock exhaust port. Remove the four screws using this tool from your toolkit and everything will come off together. With the P2, we had the option to remove the fan, but the S1 is built differently and the fan has to stay in. So we put the new adapter in place and gently screw it back together. Well, that was easy, so let's test them out. The best way to test out how the exhaust is flowing is by cutting wood since it generates the most visible smoke. I'll also run the test at the bottom right side of the laser, which is the furthest point from the fan. Here's what I'm looking for when I'm running this test. I'm expecting the smoke to kind of plume up and swirl around, but once the job is complete, I'm hoping that all of the smoke is evacuated within five seconds. And that end result looks pretty good to me. I would often wait 10 seconds or more after my P2 finished with the stock fan and there would still be smoke in there when I opened the lid. Now let's try our test out on the S1. I tried to get some totally sweet inside the laser footage, but it didn't quite come out as expected. However, you can see when the job finishes that the smoke starts to clear immediately.
After my five second rule, I open the lid and it's nice and clear, probably better than the P2. Now you might be asking, why not just use the six inch inline fan for even more exhaust power? Well, you can, but you would need to buy a six inch to four inch reducer because the adapters only come in the four inch size, as far as I know. The other reason I'm sticking with the four inch fan is because it's here and I find it works fine for lasers this size, especially if you don't have a long distance to the exit of your workspace. If the bed were any larger or if I had to route the ductwork a long distance, I would probably opt to use the six inch fan. The only thing I would have done differently is order the straight end adapter instead of the vertical. That's because without the riser base installed, you don't get a lot of clearance above the tabletop. So you need to make sure your laser is close to the back edge of the table. That way the ducting has more space to fit. If you have the riser base installed, using the vertical adapter would have no clearance issues at all. Not a huge issue, just something I didn't think about before ordering. If you aren't sure this kind of upgrade is worth it, let me leave you with three reasons I prefer this style setup. Number one, the most obvious, you get to increase the exhaust power, which cuts down on the fumes and smoke. Airflow in and out of your laser is actually a very important factor when it comes to safety as well as the quality of your work. Number two, you get to take exhaust control back from the laser software. I know there are some exhaust settings you can modify in the software itself, but for me, it's not enough. For example, I prefer to run the fan on max while I'm doing jobs, but even when I'm done, I'll turn it down to a quarter power and just let the air run on low for a while. Your project will be off gassing for a while, even after it's finished, so it's another way to keep the air as nice as possible in my workspace. Number three, it allows for a more proper exhaust setup. With the stock setup, the fan is located at the laser source and pushes the exhaust through the duct to the outside. The issue with this orientation is if something ever happened to this ducting, like you managed to puncture it and didn't notice, or you just had a bad seal, well, that exhaust you're pushing is going to escape through that hole or through that bad seal into your workspace. Ideally, you want the exhaust fan to be placed as close to the exit of your workspace as possible. That way, if you accidentally puncture a hole or have a bad seal somewhere, you'll be pulling the exhaust, which would also pull air into the hole not out of it, because the fan would be behind it. All right, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. You can check out a link to these adapters and the fan I use below. I have no affiliation whatsoever with the company that makes them. I just thought it was a cool product that I'm going to be using and I wanted to pass it on. Next video, we're going to be doing a fiber laser project. It's been a really long time. So if you want to check that out, make sure you're subscribed and I'll see you next time.